um, if if they have less positive experiences in their life in their childhood, that could make them more susceptible to chronic illness. So let's say someone had 90% of their childhood was positive and they had a few traumatic events. Maybe they were abused. Maybe they had, um, I, I don't know, some, some bad thing happened to them, but the 90% of their childhood was, was positive. Is that like, that would indicate since they had more positive experiences, they may be less likely to have a chronic illness based on that. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Or, and, and it's not just chronic illness. It's any of these effects of trauma, okay. you know, whether it's PTSD or complex PTSD where, where it's difficult, intimacy is difficult or relationships with intimate partners or friends or coworkers or a chronic illness. Uh, and, and what those, those positive experiences do um, things like having good friends and neighbors Things like having a belief that there is comfort and it's possible to be comforted. Having parents who repair when they make the totally human mistakes we all do. Mm -hmm. They actually support resilience. And so it could be that if you've had a lot of that support and resilience and you have an accident, that you are able, your system is able to rebound and recover as it's designed to much more easily. Got it. Yeah, and, and if you've grown up with abuse, that makes the caregiver a much less reliable, much, it's the source of threat. And so, again, there, if that's something that's gone on over a long period of time, you're likely going to not have as many positive experiences in that system mm -hmm. because of the parents' difficulty with regulating themselves and their own trauma that makes yeah. them abusive. So the positive experiences are more protective than we realized. That is, that is such great news. I love it. I that. know. It's yeah. Really powerful to get. So, I mean, yeah. and, and obviously I know that there are a lot of people watching right now that had, did not have many positive experiences growing up or have had really rough times. So, um, but I guess, I guess the question would be right. Like, even if you haven't had a lot of positive experiences, if, if moving forward in your healing journey, you start, um, cultivating more positive experiences and healthy relationships, can those also be powerful as you're moving forward in resiliency? Exactly. And, and that is part of the beauty of this understanding that we're getting about the role of life experiences and the human experiences. We all are going to experience some degree of stress and difficulty and challenge and, or trauma and so, yeah, and that's actually another one of these. So we talked about number seven. Number eight, we could talk about being brain plasticity mm -hmm. and epigenetics. There is way more reversibility than we've realized in all of these chronic conditions because they are a system. And these are still theories. They're not widely accepted yet by any means, but the research that I keep seeing supports this sense that we have symptoms because our bodies are caught in fight, flight, fight, yeah. freeze. And so our brains went into that direction really kind of as a best friend to protect us at all costs, but then weren't able to get out of that state and got stuck in it. And so we can get unstuck. And all these different approaches can chip away at the system and provide even decades after the events, even after we've developed symptoms, they can start to provide a reminder of that sense of safety that helps the nervous system start to switch off that signaling. Mm, yeah, safety. You give me the chills just thinking about it. That isn't that that is such a big one for me. And I know in talking to so many people in our community, how safety is just, that seems to be the missing piece in so many people's um, lives, recovery, uh, not feeling that safety. And once, yeah, once you can have that experience, it's like, oh, it's such an amazing experience that can, you know, bring you through so much. So awesome. Um, what are we at? Nine, 10? <laughs> hundred. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> it's a long, it's a long list of, of paradigm shifts here. Yeah, they are. You know, the safety piece, it doesn't have to be a big thing. And this is one of the, one of my favorite things I learned in my training in somatic experiencing. So for example, if you allow your system to orient to something that appeals to you, 
to um, pay attention to, like, I, I put these plants because I really like them and they're, they're really supportive. And I, I especially like this color green. Mm -hmm. If you let yourself take in, whether it's the color or the sense of the beauty of something, um, and let yourself actually notice, not just like out here with your eyes, but what happens if you take it in just a little bit, something that appeals to you, and you just notice, like for me, my system, like in my gut, something just dropped down a little bit and settled just a little bit thinking about this plant. Mm -hmm. That is all it takes to convey even an iota of safety to your system. Mm. It's something that's happening in the present moment. It's something that appeals and draws your attention. And so it's providing different information to your system than what our patterns in these survival responses are doing. So it's actually working that brain plasticity pathway and helping it shift ever so slightly in this other direction. 